Welcome to Western New York Tonight. I'm your host, Tammy Lee. Also, welcome those listening on WLNF. Joining me tonight, no stranger to our set. She's been here before, Jamie Shaner. She's owner of Home Solutions of Western New York Incorporated. I'm sucking on cough drops still because I'm still not very well, but I'm, I'm going to hang on with Jamie. She's going to help us organize <laughs> for the holidays because they just keep coming. The holidays are coming and yes, we've got to organize. Do. And we're going to be talking about not only um, holiday solutions, but also decluttering, which we all could use all year round. So thanks so much for coming back. Thanks for having me back. You were one of our very favorite guests. People had asked me to bring you back, and I said, I'll, I'll try. She's a busy lady. I'm always available, Tammy Lee. Well, let's start talking. What do you want to take first? Like holiday, because it's kind of holiday-esque, or decluttering in general? Well, you could pick, or I could pick, I guess. Let's, Why don't you pick? Let's talk about holidays. Let's be specific okay. first, and then we'll get general. So for holidays, we deal with, you know, decorating. We, de we do also having people over to our homes. And I think a lot of people don't do home entertaining because they're intimidated by the process. And also they don't want to see their, their houses when they're in a, in a cluttered state, right? So how do I make that a little bit less stressful? Well, sometimes I tell people use the holidays as an excuse to motivate you to do the things that you've been postponing. Sometimes that can be the best way to get your house clean, to get your house in order. We're having company. We're going to have 20 people for Thanksgiving. So everybody get into gear and let's go. So sometimes I tell people use the holiday as an excuse to do what you've been postponing all summer while you were enjoying the garden and sitting outside mm -hmm. and sipping mimosas by the water, whatever you that might be doing. That sounds so nice. I don't think that ever <laughs> happened this summer, but that's okay next summer. Uh, so it can be a good time to do it. So one of the things I like to tell my clients when they tell me, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm never ready for the holidays. It's, I'm always feeling overwhelmed. How can I make it better? And one of the things I tell people is, first of all, take a look at the things that you do for the holidays and start saying no to the things that you don't enjoy that don't bring you pleasure. For you mean like events or, or events, invitations? It's okay. saying no to invitations or saying no to, for example, holiday cards people bemoan the fact that they have to write out a hundred cards and even though we've got computers and we can print out labels and stuff I say if the if the concept of sending joy at holiday time brings you your sadness loved ones, if, if it overwhelms <laughs> you just stop nothing bad will happen mm -hmm. nothing bad will happen so just stop I stopped about 20 years ago and people still send me cards if that's what they love to do and I love to get them but I don't feel guilty I never run out and say oh they sent me a card I must send one mm -hmm. nope I, I don't send cards it just got to be too much. A, a task that is really daunting. Right. Yeah, you're right, and it doesn't bring you pleasure. It's no, task, and some right? people do. And then the other thing that I would find a little bit annoying is, okay, here's a card from somebody I haven't talked to in a year, and all it is is stamped with, you know, with their address. It's like oh. pre-stamped, and they sent it to me. So, Not very meaningful. What was the point? Exactly. How mm -hmm. did we really connect? Unless it was a really awesome card. But So that's one thing I say. Take things off your plate if you don't enjoy doing them. So Thanksgiving time is another time, or any holiday meal preparation. What I've done, what saved me, because invariably people will, will say, oh, we forgot the such and such for the, at our house, we're not allowed to change traditional holiday meals. Like you don't shake things up and have beets instead of sweet potatoes or oh, whatever. Oh, no, right, you, right. You know, holiday meals are traditional. So I computerized my list. So it's got little lines where I can go. So I go through my cupboard. Do I have cloves or do I need cloves? Do I have vanilla or do I need vanilla? So you check it off what you already have, and then you've got a, a list that you take to the grocery store. So nothing gets forgotten and nothing gets purchased twice mm -hmm. because oftentimes when we're going through actually organizing a spice cupboard, will find 10 of a certain spice and the person will say yeah every year at Thanksgiving time I forget if I have allspice or pumpkin spice or whatever and I go out and buy it and then they ultimately they have 10 of them. right they have 10. Well, what is your opinion about replacing spices I mean I just I had a, had a debate with somebody else about this they're like oh no they're good forever I'm like they're not no. really but you don't place it replace them every year do you well should we you should smell them mm -hmm. give them a smell if cinnamon doesn't smell like cinnamon if cinnamon smells the same as oregano and parsley and, and basil it's time to, it's time to change and sometimes you can tell by the style of the tin mm -hmm. especially when I'm working downsizing seniors that's to, from the to, 70s you know it's probably gonna well go. or if it's it's got the old purple price stamp on it. Oh, right. We actually did just find it wasn't a spice, but it was a cleaning product. It was Windex, mm -hmm. not the name brand Windex, but it was a Windex product. It had a date on it. It was from 1988. How funny is so that? So 1988. 
and it was still three quarters mm -hmm. full. So either she never cleaned her windows or she, she just kept buying other, and this one got pushed to the back. Isn't that funny? Yeah. You know, when you were talking about holiday prep, I was I was kind of thinking, you, you know, you, you use the holiday as a means to get your house organized, but don't you think there's a certain point in which you should start to prepare for that? You don't wait till the week before. Like, what's a generous mm -hmm. amount of time so you're not feeling stressed? Well, again, let's say you're having dinner for Thanksgiving. Well, you don't wait until the night before to figure out, do I have all the place, do I have all the dishes, do I have, mm -hmm. do I have everything I need? I would say you want to give yourself, I mean, you know it's coming. It's not like it suddenly appears. So if you're hosting the dinner, I would say you want to give yourself a good three weeks to make sure that your linens are clean and ready or whatever it is that you're using, that if you need to borrow folding chairs, you get the folding chairs you need because you don't want to be scrambling and suddenly somebody has to sit in the other room because right. you don't have chairs. So it's it, there's a balance so, between how early to do it and then really right. being able to do it with comfort. Because there are levels of preparation. So there's the get the house ready, declutter, you mm -hmm. know, clear the surfaces, do a, a nice deep clean. Then there's the couple days before, what do we got to do? And then there's the night before, maybe set the table the night before so that on the day of the holiday meal, that's already done. Um, I would enjoy your company right, too. I think right. that's a whole element as well. If you have everything you're doing on that day when everybody's arriving, there's, you're going to have no joy. And you do want to be part of the celebration, not just the chef of the meal. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to enjoy your company. So, yeah. So, the more you can do ahead of time and by streamlining, by coming up with systems that will help you to not be in a panic, it's, it's all beneficial. Mm -hmm. Same with the decorating for the holidays, whatever the holiday is. Well, one of the things I tell people is you, it, you should have the room to store it. So here's a tip I'm going to share. If one blow-up lawn ornament is good, oh, you're five funny. are not necessarily better. better. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you're going to have more than one, I'm a firm believer that they should all be in scale. So if you've got an eight-foot dog wearing a Santa's cap, you shouldn't have a two-foot Santa in a sleigh. It doesn't make sense, people. Mm -hmm. but please, please, I'm begging you, have logical <laughs> blow-up lawn, or lawn ornaments. I don't even know how so, that really came to be very I so popular, know. but the, they, I I mean, just they're, saw, they're everywhere. There, I saw a turkey. I mean, there's, there's every mm -hmm. holiday now. There's every holiday. It's, and it's loud. So it's not it's not a particularly you know joyous mm -hmm. night sound, but so I tell people when you decorate for the holidays, make sure you have what you can appropriately use and enjoy and store off season. So again, I've I've computerized my holiday decorating things and they're binned by room, so I don't have to of do a blitz. You have them I don't have room. to get out ten bins to do the living room. Mm -hmm. I just need the room that says living room. And so that way I can do it at my own pace. I can do a room a night or I can do it in a weekend, but I can, it's organized. And then when we put it away, it gets put away the same way. So it's logical and it just saves me time. I'm not wandering around with that thing, wondering where do I put this? I know it's, I've got a description of where things go. They're, they're binned by room, and it just makes decorating more fun yeah. because it's not stressful. Because you can enjoy it. Right. Now, I have to ask you a question. Do you have your things in clear totes? I have my things in solid gray totes. Do you really? I, I would do. have lost that bet. I would have lost that bet. Well, probably just because they're all uniform. And in the solid gray, they come small, medium, and large. So mm. I like the uniformity of the look. The one thing I'm not a huge fan of, but for some people it's helpful, is the seasonally colored bins. So Halloween is in orange and black, and Christmas is in green and red, and Hanukkah is in blue and white, or whatever it might be. But if you ever downsize, now I've got three orange and black bins, and what am I going to put in them? Right. I like to just, just just get a bin. Get a bin that works and, that, and they stack and then you can use them for other things when you decide that I don't want to decorate for Halloween anymore. Okay, or. I like that very much. <laughs> How about in terms of, you had gift ideas to reduce stuff. What does that mean? Well, again, we've become such a commercialized consumer society and so often, and especially I notice this more with younger families, where they'll say to me, I don't know what to do. You know, we have three kids and everybody buys them presents and they already have too much stuff. 
And I tell people, you need to set the rules, you need to set the parameters, and you get to say, no, we, let's do this instead. So, so give a gift of an event, do something together, have something c consumable, go out to dinner or movie tickets, or for teenagers, a, a gift oh, card to Sunoco yeah. or mm -hmm. something, you know, a gift card to a gas station, you know, when they're always looking to put gas in the car. Things that can be used and are really appreciated, but aren't things that you have to find a place for. Right. So I, I try to tell people, and then the other thing people complain about is gift wrapping. So I say, why don't you just, just use gift bags? How, how much easier could it be? Than to put you, your stuff in a little cute right. bag. You just have, all you mm -hmm. need is tissue and, you know, maybe three sizes of bags, small, medium, and large, and you just, there you go. You're done. My husband and I love to gift wrap. So I was going to say, I like to do it We too. love Turn to gift wrap. So we have a whole bin of wrap and a whole bin of ribbons and mm -hmm. a whole bin of bows and a smaller bin of tags. And, you know, we build a fire. And he builds a fire. I enjoy the fire. We pour a glass of wine. And we love wrapping Christmas presents. Mm -hmm. It brings us joy to do it. We enjoy the activities. So we have lots of wrapping paper. So that's but, a good thing. Yeah. But so how do you organize that stuff? You said you kind of have it in totes and oh, everything all, down in your basement or whatever. They're in, in the attic, but yeah, mm -hmm. all the holiday decorations are in your attic and there's, you know, sections for each whatever. But yeah, they're in totes. So about the first week in December, the totes come down and we start a wrap it. Do you wrap it? <laughs> now, your husband happens to be here, so he'll just pretend we're not talking about him. But okay. Does he, does he have as much of an organizational predisposition or did you kind of coach him through this super organized lifestyle? I learned, I learned from him. Really? He's okay, more organized than I am. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can tell when he sends me things he is, <laughs> but I just didn't know like logistically. No, he's very things. organized. I grew up in a you know wonderful household, but we weren't particularly organized. So sometimes you'd have to fly into panic mode because somebody's stopping by. And when I married into his family, everything was always organized. And you sort of take a look around and you, you think, this really is easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is much easier to just maintain. So I'm not, and we've talked about this before, I'm not obsessive compulsive. I'm not cleaning all the time, but, but when things are in order, you don't go into panic if the doorbell rings and somebody stops by. You welcome them into your home because right. you're comfortable. You don't have piles of laundry on the couch that you have to lift up and move over in order for them to have a seat. Plus, I think internally you just feel better having things just in order. I think that Absolutely. even though it requires effort to, to maintain, it does. if you kind of maintain it, it's not so acute. Right, it's not Correct. like an acute emergency room visit. Right, sometimes mm -hmm. what we have to do is attack a situation to get it under control and then just work on a maintenance program for mm -hmm. a client and and they'll say to me, wow, you know, it's so much easier now. When there's a backlog and people get overwhelmed, they tend to sometimes shut down. So I... S well, and, that, and I know we're going to get to decluttering in a bit, but when last time you were here, you would describe kind of your business philosophy as getting people organized and being able to find a plan, a path there, because not everybody right. can just do it. Right. So with that said, do, do many people call you during the holidays to help you with organizing during holidays, or is it just kind of like the first of the year, I just want a new life? Well, we do have some clients who will help have us help them get out their decorations or put them away, maybe just because of a time constraint, mm -hmm. but because we've created bins and labeled them, this is what goes in this bin, and if they still haven't sort of gotten on board with the system, they'll just say, will you come and put, put our holiday away? How about, a, how about a gift of you? What a great you gift. Go. I would love <laughs> that. You get to show up at my door and be my gift of you. So gift we're going to take a quick break. Do I, I have to dress for it? You would just dress beautifully like you do. No worries. We're going to take a quick break, but before we go, how about a website people can check out or contact information or whatever? www.homesolutionswny.com. Okay. Phone number 716-984-4841. Perfect. Plenty more here in just a few minutes. Don't go away. Welcome back to Western New York tonight. I'm your host, Tammy Lee. Also welcome those listening on WLNF. Joining me tonight, Jamie Shaner. If we missed the first two 15 minutes, you've got 15 more with her. She's owner of Home Solutions of Western New York Incorporated. We've had her on before and people loved her. We love her. She helps us feel like we can get our homes more organized for the holidays and also we're going to be talking about downsizing as well so another option for people out there listening but tell me a little how you started this business because I love the idea of an entrepreneur and you you just must have thought this up or well I started with a business partner in 2005 we thought we were going to focus on home staging 
but we realized Western New York wasn't really ready to embrace the concept of home staging, but we also realized from a selling your home standpoint, a lot of what really has to happen is more organizing than staging. People don't realize when you're selling your home, they're gonna open up every cupboard, every closet, maybe not drawers, but in the kitchen, you can't hide everything in the cupboards and then have people open it and it's Pandora's box and stuff starts tumbling out. out yeah. Because then that sets the image of there's not enough room in this kitchen to store. Mm -hmm. Same with closets. You wanna you know, pack away off-season things to create the illusion of, wow, look at how much space there is in this closet. That's a really good idea and a good point too because you're yeah. right, if something's really stuffed full, I, I feel like that's not enough it's space. It's not enough space, but if you have, there's room to wiggle around or room you open up and, you know, the juice glasses are lined up with the drinking glasses and then the wine glasses and it makes a nice image, people, they can envision themselves, oh, I can have, mm -hmm. this can be mine. Mm -hmm. So so it, it really transitioned from a focus of staging to organizing and in 2012, my business partner retired and I bought out her half of the corporation. And uh, a year later, I brought on an employee. And actually, we started working with, an, with a, I'm looking to bring on a second employee. Because we are so busy, um, there's a lot of need. And I think because we had the aging demographic here in Western New York, a lot of people are looking to, we've lived here for 52 years and we need to go. We need to get into senior living, maybe not necessarily assisted living, but just we can't maintain this house anymore. We can't maintain the lawn and we ha what do we do? Yeah. And that's, as senior move managers, that's what we do. We get them from that home with 52 years of accumulation to a lighter existence in a new setting. How do you even tackle such a thing when you have all these years of memories and like, uh, you know, emotion attached to these things right. that we can't keep if we're moving to a smaller place. How do you even start that conversation or those, have those decisions well, made? Well, we try to start with, start easy and work our way towards the more difficult. And we talk about uh, keeping some of. So let's just say we have a wall of books and we're, we can, but we, and we love our books. So let's keep some, let's pick, let's try to cut it in half and keep the most important books. Let's look at the, the Hummel figurines and instead of having 50, let's pick your favorite 10 and we'll find a place for them to go. So things that are collections, we try to be respectful and downsize. And then the other things, family photos, m mementos, your kids' school papers that have been there for 30 years. Then we call in the family, it's time. You either take mm -hmm, your stuff mm -hmm. that mom's been storing for you for 30 years or it goes. You, you can't keep it all forever. So we put deadlines to family members who need to get their stuff out. We look at another big thing is linens. And, you know, oftentimes we find sets of sheets for bed sizes that don't even exist in the house anymore. So when people are moving, okay, we're going to have two twin beds or we're going to have one queen size bed or we're going to have two whatever. All right, let's take two sets of sheets for each bed that you're going to have. And we can let go of the rest. That's all you need. Yeah, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. it's just to be able to change the sheets and rotate. If there are issues, maybe throw in, sometimes people like flannel sheets in the winter and you know, it just makes me hot thinking about them. But oh, my, but my, I mom, like my mom loves them. <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> got okay. her some new ones today. But uh, so, so you downsize in that way. A lot of places don't want candles. Kitchens get downsized. You're and right. if you're going into a place that provides uh, your main meal, well, maybe you don't need the lasagna pan and four different sizes of measuring cups. So we, again, take something that can cook, a, you know, soup and something that can maybe make some pasta and one casserole dish and you're good to go. So by pointing out to people the new reality, we can sort of back into what should go and, and what should stay behind, whether it's for an estate sale or donation or consignment or whatever it might be. The point of like the kitchen things, I can say, I think a good conversation might be, you don't need two lasagna pants, maybe you don't even need one, but if you decide that you do, you can always buy something if you well, really feel you need right, it. Right, things that aren't irreplaceable. Yeah, so, but the heirloomy stuff I have trouble with. Well, the heirloomy like, stuff, I get it. And it, it was, I get it, I do, I, I understand it. But then so, you have sometimes too much heirloomy stuff and like, like the heavy, how you're describing downsizing, it doesn't make sense. Where does it go? I mean, right. we're moving somebody now from, from, a, from a very old, beautiful dark wood uh, Victorian sort of setting 
to a light walls oak downsizing apartment and mm -hmm. so when she said oh what about those lights I said they're not going to go you know she wants the place to be aesthetically pleasing so she is listening to some of my I say those are beautiful but they belong here they 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 aren't going to look right in your new home so maybe it could be time to let them go and she agreed mm -hmm. she said what about those figurines I said mm, they live here too they they're they're not they shouldn't go the things that you've chosen are appropriate for the space and you've done a good job so let's stop there let's let that go and yeah. so do you find resistance quite a bit or do you think most people because you come in as a neutral entity and not right. a family member or anybody right. who's offering anything but a professional recommendation well and the other thing that will happen is sometimes rather than engage in battle and sometimes i i, I i'll know we we moved somebody else recently and i knew there were about Eight too many lamps going but I said all right we'll take them all and then you get to look at them all in the space and decide which ones you want obviously you're not gonna unless you're gonna line them up in the hallway and have a lamp row call me and I'll take them back for you know for, we'll donate them or whatever mm -hmm. we're gonna do but just give me a call and I'll come and take away the ones you don't want anymore and that worked for her she, she just couldn't decide in this setting what lamps were going to be appropriate in that setting so we took them mm -hmm. and she chose and and then she let them go she she did a and you're 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 you I want to say you're a fierce advocate because you really want that person to end up in a better spot right but at the same time you're you know you give them empowerment and respect Absolutely. and I like how that balance plays well you out. do and 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 a lot of times there is the ability to store things not not off-site paid storage but in a senior facility, sometimes you get a little storage cage, yeah. or in an apartment, sometimes there's a, a, a basement, or maybe there's an extra closet. So I say, all right, we can store as much mementos as will fit in this space. So but you're limited, right? And those decisions right. still have to be made, right? So how long do you, does the kind of the relationship end or last with you? I mean, so you it you do all this stuff, and you know, like. What, what is it it starts with an initial consultation. So I go and I meet and we do a walkthrough. And, and, and so that's where the relationship starts. And then we pick the end time and then we work backwards from there. So some people can, can we can go in and blitz. Next week we're, gonna, we're packing a huge city house in two days, moving on the third day and it'll be over. Oh my gosh, okay. In other times we need to work in shorter spurts. So a lot of it depends on the client. So sometimes it might be over the course of two weeks. Or if there's a lot of downsizing decisions to be made and family's not there to help with that, it might take a month or it could take a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got somebody that I met with last week who's moving next July, but she wanted to meet with me. And I said, oh, God soon? bless you. No, oh. I was like, this is awesome because I got another guy, went to meet with somebody yesterday and they're supposed to move November 30th. I mean, we're, we're booked we were literally booked through Christmas, mm -hmm. but I'm making wiggle room to get them from point A to point B because they need the help. Yeah. So when somebody calls and says, I, I, I want to move in July, I just think, well, isn't that awesome? A breath of fresh air. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. really give it some thought. Yeah. Yeah. And at least that way you can kind of plan and think right. about that. The one thing I was saying during break that struck us when we, after your last show was the idea of ways you can still keep mementos and heirlooms, but maybe just, like, as you said, like the collection, respecting them. So many people have different levels of China, like this family's, this family's. Having just a small little play setting of four or even two, if it's just two of you, right. you can remember that. Sure, and enjoy it, meaning. and enjoy it, and but then release the rest of it for somebody else mm -hmm. to enjoy, which is nice. We're this, the people that we're packing that will be moving on Friday. She had four sets of dishes, and so two were similar, and so we looked at the sizes of the plates and the number of things, and you know, I I said here's what I would do. I prefer this set, and this is why I like the shape of this bowl because it's multi. You know, blah 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 mm -hmm. blah. I gave my a little input, but if you prefer this, they're equally fine. But she liked what I pointed out about the set, so we took the set. She's leaving this the set for. There's going to be a, a gigantic estate sale. Okay. So that'll you know so that'll be nice. But again, and then she has fine china, which her son said to her. But you, you know we never use it. But she said, but maybe now I will. Now that I'm going to be lighter, maybe I will. So I said to her, how about this? They're in the the you know, the quilted dish packs. Yes, that the, nobody the, ever digs right. into. Right, so I said, I'll make you a deal. If, if we take it, we get to unpack it. So when you open up a cupboard, there it is. Mm -hmm. You will be much more likely to use it 
if you don't have to unzip a thing and pull it out and take off this foam piece and that foam piece and this foam piece and dig to get to the dishes, let's make them so you'll actually maybe use them. And she agreed. She said, okay, but can we save the packaging? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can save the packaging. You're so That's good. Fine. We're going to take our break, and we'll have to have you back because okay. we're out of time with, with your segment. But if you can just tell us, Jamie, again, the telephone number and a website for people to call. Telephone number 716-984-4841. Website www.homesolutionswny.com. You can go on the website. You can sign up for a monthly newsletter that I share oh, tips, lots of tips and, and blog posts and newsletters that people find helpful. Excellent. And so think about the new year and getting all there organized and cleaned Set up. Set it so as a perfect. goal. Perfect. All right. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Don't go away.